Hey Froggy friends, Kiro Style here. Welcome back to Octopath Traveler 2. Thank you so much for joining me here on stream. Hey everyone, good to see you. Hey Sai, hey Slimmer Badge, welcome to the stream. Forever Flame, Shadow Girl. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming by, I really appreciate it. As you know, today is going to be our final Octopath Traveler 2 stream. And our goal is of course to defeat the secret ultimate super boss. Now, I've done some preparations for it, but we'll talk about that in in just a little bit. Um, <laughs> everyone on my timeline is just playing Final Fantasy 16. I wish I could play it. But um, I'm excited to be finishing this game. And, you know, this game's been fun, but I kind of want to put a closing note on it for good. Just because it's been kind of a long journey, even though we took a break in the middle. <laughs> um, before we get going, I do want to take advantage of the fact that now that V-Day's gone, we could do Tavern Banter again, so I want to do at least one more Tavern Banter. And I'm gonna see if we can finally do the one that is the all-girls party. What up? Why? Wait, why isn't it working? I had- I had it unlocked in the other tavern. Why- why don't you guys want to banter? I was literally in, like, the other town the other day, and they had the banter going. I mean, not that it's a big deal, but I just kind of want to get as much as I can. Oh, maybe I don't have the all-girls one unlocked. Hey, Ash! Welcome to the stream! Okay, I guess I just don't have the right party formation. I don't remember which banters I have left. Oh well, it's not a big deal. Okay, um, let me explain my strategy before we go in. We're gonna go to Beasting Bay Anchorage, because that's the closest location. Okay, so, um, where should I start? First of all, you know, last stream we defeated the boss of the ending, V-Day, and there's a couple of things that I kind of forgot to mention that I just kind of thought was interesting. Like, remember how I kept saying that, like, Agnia um, didn't really play much of a role in the plot? Like, Agnia and Particio's stories didn't have much to do with the plot, but Particio's was kind of related to Ori, which made him connected. Agnia's had only a relation to Tansy, which is such a minor part, which is fine. It's just kind of weird she was the only one, but maybe it was offset by the fact that she's the one who says, like, the closing lines on the stage. I guess that kind of offsets it. I just thought that was interesting to note. Um, so, l during the V-Day stream, like, I looked up guides, and the problem with this game right now, because it's only two months old, and because these bosses are so hard, all the guides are either too vague or too prescriptive. So either they tell you exactly what to do step by step, or they give you like very little information to go off of other than the boss's weaknesses and maybe some attacks. So with V-Day it was okay because I found a guide, and um, I forgot to mention but I guess I should because it was a big help. The guide was by um, a YouTuber, and his name was Darren Newcomer. I found it through a Reddit post that I believe, I can't remember if he was the one who posted on Reddit or someone else linked it, but like his guide used two level 50 characters and a bunch of level 1 characters, and he used Throne as Arms Master, but I really wanted to use Hikari as Arms Master. So with a different party formation, I had to craft my party differently and use the same general idea, but like extrapolate it to my party. Does that make sense? So it was still a little bit of thinking on my part, but it wasn't quite the same as at the end of Octopath 1, where like the game had been out a few years, and then the boss guide for Galdera, I found a really good guide that was like, specific enough but still general enough like it gave you tips on what you needed in each party what the general strat was and not too much like not like turn by turn you know what i mean and that was a really fun stream like it was spicy at times but we pulled through and defeated the boss without needing to reset which was really satisfying because the boss fights in this game are satisfying and plus the fact that it had the gauntlet going up to it i didn't want to have to redo that again 
Uh, in this game, we don't have the gauntlet, so that's fine. I don't mind having to redo it. Now, I came across the same problem for this super boss, which is, of course, Galdera, who was the boss of the previous game. And like, he's a lot harder in this game because he's juiced up. He does a lot more damage. They recommend level 80 to 90, even like max level if possible. But he hits hard, and you kind of need to go in with a pretty good strat. So again, I found a lot of really prescriptive strats and some really vague strats. And I kind of want to find a middle ground where I kind of craft my strat myself a little bit too. But you know what? I thought, nah. Let's let's follow. Let's follow some ideas. Let's look at some guides. And I'll try to emulate a little bit of what they do, just because. You know, it actually is kind of fun to. You know, not to say exploit the system, but like find some unique strats. So the in V Day, our strat was you know Casty concocts, and then we buff up Hikari and Oswald. That was our strat. And we also learned that Merchant was really good because of hired help assassins. And Merchant and Cleric were the last two classes for me to get the third job license, and I thought, well, that's kind of weird that they made the third job licenses for these ones take a little bit longer. But I now realize why. Merchant's very powerful because of hired help assassins, which we saw. Cleric is really good because of Aelfric's Blessing. So in this game, Aelfric's Blessing for the Cleric makes it so that a character can get an extra turn at the end. It's basically like having the ability Patience, which was from the first game, but that was RNG. And so I'm using the... what we call the... the Aelfric's Blessing Sacred Refulgence strat. So in my party, I have three Clerics plus Temenos, and that's because we're going to be spamming Aelfric's Blessing. And I think this should work. You'll also notice Temenos is at 1 HP because we are going, we gave him, or I gave him, Alpione's Amulet, which makes him deal more damage when HP is low. So in the previous game, there was a strat where you could do that with Ulbrick. Um, if you go into the fight after Ulbrick had lost a duel with someone, he had 1 HP, and then you could spam the, the War Master skill, which did a ton of damage when he was low HP. And I didn't do that because I didn't like I didn't like the idea of that strat, um, because there was a lot large chance of him dying and you need to revive him and then reset your strat. But this game, I think we can get away with doing it easier. That's why I'm going to try this. And you know what? It'll still be fun, even though it's a little bit more prescriptive. But I think it'll be good. And there is some RNG to it, so that means I will still have to think and kind of plan things out. So we'll see. Hey! So Felix! Welcome to the stream, thank you so much for coming by! Good to see you, welcome to the stream. Um, so to prepare for this, learn skills. I got targeted strike, this is from Veronica. Um, obviously you fight her in the theater. She was pretty easy. This one takes an enemy and debuffs them so they only take critical damage. It's basically like critical scope from the inventor. And then for Oshet, um, we need... Oh, I guess it doesn't give me a description here. We need the Dreadwing. So the Dreadwing is a monster that does AoE wind damage. There's not very many AoE wind attacks in the game. And has a chance of instant deathing enemies. In the previous game, there were enemies you could capture that would do that. But they were boss enemies. So to defeat the optional boss, find them in dungeon with a low rate of like 2% capture them and you need to use them at full charge and and it was only a percent chance of it working but people use that against Galdera in the first game but it was a really big pain to farm those monsters but Dreadwing's pretty easy to find you just find them outside of gravel I also brought um, a Vagrant Frog King 3 he hits with the axes, single target but debuffs defense um, I need an AoE spear and also this guy also buffs your attack and your speed and then I just needed um, a random dagger enemy. So those are the enemies I brought. And then Peekaboo will be useful for, for debuffing. Um, I also brought Agnia, a dance partner. This time it's the girl from the Dancers Guild. She gives one BP when you dance for someone. I don't think I'll need it, but I thought it'd just be nice to have. And then you need to make sure it's nighttime so you get Throne and Temenos' um, debuffs at the beginning of the battle. Oh yeah, also you need to spam, you need to go farm for... Forbidden Elixirs. You can get these from the guard outpost in Conning Creek. Just steal them from the guards. It says do not drink. 
What it does is it drops someone to 1 HP and it fills up their SP and their BP, which is actually really good. <laughs> and that's where the Alpione strat comes in. It, um, for skills, everyone has a step ahead. That'll give us an extra turn at the beginning because this is, like V-Day, we're going full offensive. We're going to try to manipulate the turns at the beginning as much as we can. Um, peak performance and deal more damage for everyone that's going to be a damage dealer. And then upgrade accessories for extra boost to stats. I haven't used any nuts yet either. That'll be like a last resort. Casty, boost start, step ahead. And then BP saver and SP saver. Or BP regen. Uh, Oswald, deal more damage, step ahead, peak performance, BP regeneration. Surprisingly, he's actually not going to be doing a lot of DPSing, despite the fact he usually is. Um, Ochet, upgrade accessories for extra, step ahead, deal more damage, peak performance. Temenos is our other main damage dealer. Elemental Augmentation, step ahead, deal more damage. Inner Strength will give up more SP to make Inner or Sacred Refulgence do more damage. Throne, upgrade accessories, step ahead, deal more damage, peak performance. Agnia, boost start, step ahead, upgrade accessories, deal more damage. She's not really a damage dealer. Deal more damage is here just in case to help her DPS if she needs to. Um, Particio, step ahead. Show goes on for um, extending his buffs that he's going to be giving people. SP saver, BP regen. For the equipment, um, just giving everyone really strong things. You need to make sure your arms master has Lionheart's Axe. Giant's Club is also great, raises potency of physical attacks, and Battle Tested Blade to boost his swords. So he's not gonna have the sword or the dag or the staff arms master skill, but that's fine. Stuff to boost his attack. Casty needs high speed so she can go first. That's quite important. A lot of people bought this I bought this quick cloak and art of disguise from Mary Hills for them. And Swift Shield. Oswald, same kind of thing. Boost his elemental attack as high as you can. Boost Oshet's attack. Temenos, boost his attack, or elemental attack. Finisher's Claws to raise damage dealt by critical hits. Alpione's Amulet to give him basically enmity. He does more damage when he's low on HP. Throne, um, more physical attack stuff, some speed stuff for her. Acnea, physical attack stuff, speed stuff, same dealio. Particio, some speed, help him out. So it's it's a very speed focused build. I think that's all I really needed to say. Oh, let's go over the party formation. So my first party, your first party should be stronger physically. So these guys are using um, Ikari obviously for damage. Casty is going to be our buffer as well. Oswald is there to help us give Alphons and also Alfrix. And then, oh no, sorry, not Alphons. He's not using Alphons. He's using Alfrix. And Ochet is there to break with her monsters. Secondary team, Temnos is our damage dealer. Throne is there to help debuff and do Abers when available. Agnia is to use Windy Refrain and Critical Scope. Particio is there to just give people BP and also give people Alphons. We'll change it to nighttime because I'm going to forget. And I'll explain the boss mechanics as we go. We won't see a lot of the mechanics if I do this properly. But just reading through, I can tell how much more brutal he is in this game than he was in the previous game. Just not even just strictly a numbers issue, like he has like new mechanics and stuff. Stand aside or fight. Here I go. So again, to unlock the super boss, you need to finish all of Al's quests. Al was the first guy who gave us a side quest in this game, kind of like how Kit was the first one to give a side quest in the previous game and lead us to the to Galdera. And then you need to do the other quest for him where he um, asks you to find that book from the far reaches of hell, which was from the first game. Hey Kalani, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming by. Welcome, welcome. So this is that mysterious island that we saw earlier. I'm also going to save here just so that we can keep a save file before we fight the boss. Who knows, maybe one day I want to come back to it and try a different strategy and just do it for fun. 
Oh, there's actually some chests here, too. Well, I have everything I think I need. I don't even think there's enemies around here, so I don't need, need to worry. Oh, there's a bunch of chests here. I should have looted this place earlier. Oh yeah, and I also needed to go back to some of the towns and like inquire a bunch of people to unlock the new weapons in some of those shops like Timberine and Mary Hills. So if you go to those shops and you can't find some items, you just need to go around and um, inquire everyone. And if you still don't get it, turn it to nighttime and then go around and bribe people with Hikari because some NPCs are only at night. Okay. You know what, I'm going to save again just in case so we don't have to re-pick those chests. Am I ready? Again, Temnos is at 1 HP. I gave him a Forbidden Elixir ahead of time. Although it's not really necessary because I'm going to be using more Forbidden Elixirs on him anyways. So this door was previously closed. The gate of... This looks familiar. Remember, this is the Gate of Finnis from the previous game. Okay, yeah, but double check, it is nighttime. You can't really tell in here because it's indoors. Hey, Al. Ugh! Ugh! You! You travelers who don't speak during side quests. No, you must stop. It's too dangerous to go any further. Please, you must turn back. You know, it'd be kind of interesting if they revealed that Al was like a descendant of Kit or something like that. Oh, so it begins the tale of Between Worlds. Okay, well, you know, I guess I'll just save here too. In the gate of blah blah blah. Okay, we'll get into the fight and then I'll explain some of the mechanics, but again, we won't see all the mechanics. The sense of danger is overwhelming. Are you certain you wish to proceed? Yes. Okay, well, I'm already divided. See, I, I'm just confused, like, what V-Day has to do with Galdera? I mean, I know they don't, but, like, the Twelve defeated V-Day, and then they defeated Gal Galdera. <laughs> don't tell me there's gonna be, like, a third a god that they defeated back in the day that's gonna be, like, the next game. Brave souls. I don't even have a voice this time. Why have you come here? If you seek to prevent my return... Then I shall consume you all! <laughs> Watch the next game, they're gonna have, like, a Galdera fight, and then they're also gonna have, like, a V-Day optional boss fight, because it means they don't have to, they can just reuse the assets, right? I wish they let you fight Galdera here using the V-Day mechanic with all the eight characters on this in the same battle. Same music. Now it begins. Okay, so... Also, you'll notice they edited the sprite so you don't see Kit inside the eye anymore, since he's not here. Okay, so, just like in the previous fight with this guy, we have the eyeball and then we have the souls, the three souls. And basically the souls block the eye from taking damage and whatever, or covering the weaknesses as well. Um, also, the souls have something this time where, like a buff, you can see it here. Counters attacks that do not target weak points. So in other words, if you hit any of these souls with something that is not their weak point, they counterattack you for like a bunch of damage. So you can't just really nilly AoE them all like we did in the last game. Um, you should also defeat the souls around the same time. If you defeat the souls individually, they'll like explode and do damage to you. But if you kill them all at the same time, they don't. Oh no, sorry, sorry. You have to defeat them around the same time. If you defeat them 
when they're not broken, they'll deal heavy heavy damage to you. So if I kill one, if I you know in the last game, like during one phase, you could just like spam attacks even when they're not they have shields up and kill things. You can't do that this time. Um, you have to get them broken to kill them, otherwise they'll attack you. And you got to kill all three of them around the same time. Once you kill them, then oh hey CB, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. Now, once you break the eye and do some damage to it, it'll recover, and then it'll bring back the souls. And the second the second time, or the, sorry, the first time he brings back the souls, which is the second time you fight the souls, they're going to do the same thing from the last game, where they only have one weakness unveiled, and every time you hit them, they'll cycle through it. So remember how last time I fought these guys, and I accidentally summoned an NPC using, like, Primrose or something like that? And then the NPC came in and whacked one of the souls when I didn't want him to, and it like set everything off my rocker. Um, yeah, that, that mechanic's back. When you break the eye again and he revives the souls a second time, which is your third time fighting the souls, they'll do the same thing with the counters, where each of them has a numbered counter over their head, and then they target one of your guys, and if you don't break them with or kill them within that time, then the you get instant death on that character. And the character dies permanently, you can't actually revive them this time if you do that. So, those are all the new mechanics. Oh yeah, the only weakness that all these guys have in common is Wind. Otherwise, all their weaknesses are pretty much different from each other. So... It's unfortunate... Oh no, Casty didn't go first. So... I can still do this, but it might not be as ideal. So, we're gonna boost Hikari. Okay, we're gonna try this. This is where the RNG comes in when you're turning roll priority. Um, so we're gonna. So even though the t the eyeball is involved is has his weaknesses covered, I can still debuff him. So we're going to start. And oh, just again, the ca the fact that Cassie's not going first here might hinder me a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. So I'm going to start by debuffing the eyeball here. Allow me. Targeted strike will make it so it only takes critical hits. Well, now. Okay, now Casty is of course our buffer, so we're gonna do latent I power, boost, boost, just like we did during V-Day, and then we're gonna go palm, palm, and then our favorite combination, diffusing to make it hit everyone, and then strengthening. Hey Aru, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming by. Here we go. Okay, so now everyone's buffed up. See, that's why I wanted Cassie to go first, so she could have fed Hikari BP earlier, but that's fine. So, now... Oh, Chet. We're gonna do Max Provoke Beasts, just like we did in our last one, or in our fight with V-Day. And so, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna spam the Dreadwing five times. So he hits Wind, which all of them share the win weakness. More importantly, Dreadwing has a percent chance to instantly kill an enemy. And the, the souls are actually vulnerable to this. Just like they were in the last game, but the last game didn't have like an easily accessible monster to use it with. So if you do it normally, it only has a 20% chance, but if you boost it, it goes up a 50% chance. So we're gonna pray that we actually kill the souls. If you don't, you can clean them up using Hikari, but I hope that it doesn't come to that. So we're gonna do Dreadwing, 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 Dreadwing. Ready, set, go! Yes, nice. Oh, good. Come on. Yes. Oh, I broke him, but I didn't kill him. Okay. Oh no, one more chance. Oh, come on. Thank you. That's fine. So, now Oswald is Aelfric. So Aelfric's gonna be important. We're gonna do Aelfric on... on Casty. I call upon Elfric, the Flame Bringer. Hey, Amy! Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much for following me and being a froggy friend. Okay. Um. Let's do. 
our usual BP BP physical attack. And then our usual diffusing and strengthening. I need a play. Alright, I was really hoping to to kill the bird or to kill the the soul. But that's fine. I got this changed my strategy then. I'm just trying to think of what the best way to adjust is. I'm gonna try doing this. Okay. Oswald Elfric on Ochet. I call upon Elfric, the Flame Bringer. My turn. Now Casty is also a cleric. So the nice thing about Elfric is that when everyone gets an extra turn, it still counts as only one turn for the boss. Oh, dang it. Here I come. Okay, this is where I need to adjust now. I, I wish Hikari went before the eye, because then he could have killed that other dude. Okay, we're gonna... Allow me. My okay, we're gonna try this again. Come on! Okay, goodbye. Right. Oh, perfect. Okay, Oshet went first. Okay, we're gonna do Vogue Beasts, and then we're gonna try to break Galdera now. So, okay. I gotta calculate this right now, since we're using a different strat. So the Frog King hits him for two axes, so I'll need to do at least four of these guys. One, two, three, four. Normally, I'd want to reveal more weaknesses, but I don't think I'll be able to. I'm going to hit you with the Bird King, because the Bird King will buff everyone's attack and speed. It's unfortunate, though, because he's not weak to, to, to Lance, so he's not going to take extra damage, or he's not going to reveal more weaknesses to buff up Lionhearts, but that's fine. Ready? And if we're lucky, we'll debuff defense as well. My turn. So Casty... Unfortunate again because I wish that Hikari went before her. Because then Hikari could have attacked and then she could buff him back up. Okay, but that's fine. Um, we'll be safe. We'll play it safe. Uh, 
don't want to. I want Palm Palm. I fuse Strength. And then... I have Extra, so what should I do? I already raised everyone's physical attack. You know what? I'll just restore SP. Pro chat. A pinch of this. Many thanks, Casty. Prepare yourself. So, there's no point in using Hyanka now because Aelfric's blessing gives you an extra turn, and you can't have more than one extra turn. So I can't Hyanka and then Aelfric's. I fight for my friends. So we use Lionheart's axe. It's not as strong because he's only revealed two weaknesses. But we should still do a good amount of damage with it. Axe of the Lionheart. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The critical scope really helps. Thinking time. So Oswald, you're gonna need to use a. Let's give extra BP to. Ikari. Actually, I don't even need to use a, a large pomegranate. Use this. Many thanks. Here I come. I'll end this. And then... Hey, Felix. Yeah, we're fighting um, an evil god. Isn't that great? Doesn't he look so friendly? Axe of the Lion Heart. This might actually kill you, or get really close to actually killing you. Here I go. Okay, not yet. Um. Okay, we still have extra turns. I need to give extra BP back to Hikari. Uh, you know what, I was gonna concoct it, but I might as well just give him... Palm. Here we go. Hey, Oshet. It's damage time. We'll use Beastly Fangs. It's probably her strongest one she has for me. That's my quarry. Let's go. What should I do? I don't think you'll do much damage, so I'm gonna- let's... Let's reveal more weaknesses. So you're weak to Dagger, Axe, Staff, Lightning, Light. Dagger, Axe, Staff, okay, so I can't- I can do Lightning or I can do Dagger. Oh no, I don't have Dagger. Oh no, I have- I have, an, I have a monster that can do Dagger. Let's just do- let's just do Dagger. Not actually, no, let's do Lightning. Hikari. Here I come. I'll end this. Axe of the Lion Heart. Yes. Take that, you giant eyeball. Idiot. I like how you can't see Oswald because there's like a piece of land, like. There's a piece of environment blocking his face. Wait, wait, you guys are floating in midair! <laughs> wait, Temenos is standing on the staircase! Okay, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Okay. So just like in the last one, Galdera's weaknesses get blocked off until you kill the three parts, but unlike the eyeball, you can't even debuff him or attack him during this time. So in the previous game, we would just get Warmaster, and then, like, 
AoE all of them at the same time. Um, but in this game, you can't reach the body until you do that first. Now in this game, also something has changed. You'll notice the black is not there. She used to be sticking out of his chest. Instead, you just target the other hand instead. So this phase has less like mechanics, but it's probably the more dangerous of the phase. Kind of like in the last game too. So um, you can't hurt the body until the other parts are dead. The body usually just buffs the other three parts. And as you defeat the parts, the other ones get stronger. So in other words, if you kill two of the parts and leave one of them, the last one is going to get quite strong. So you kind of want to kill them around the same time, if possible, to not give them too much of a chance. Um, especially because the last part left standing will also get extra shields too. Basically, people say, don't bother even breaking anything. Just attack with your strongest stuff. Like, don't even worry about trying to break anything because they have too many shields. So, here's my strat. Um, Agnia uses her latent power all together now, and will use critical scope. This is basically the equivalent of how Kikari used Veronica's targeted strike in the first phase. We're gonna make it so everything takes extra damage so they get critted. Hey Lork, welcome to the stream, thank you so much for coming by, welcome, welcome. So we'll do this, and then the body will be unaffected, but that's fine. Oh no, the body took it. Okay, sweet. Now. Throne is very important because of our latent power. We're going to be abusing that to get extra turns. So, latent power. As swift as a snake. So first, this is where all our jams come in play. So first we're going to use a reinforcing jam. I'll take this. So this will give us the BP for her and give her back her latent Easy power. Time. And then... Just like with our last phase, we're going to spam Aelfrix on the right people. So we're going to give Aelfrix to Agnia. So Temenos is at 1 HP because of his Alkyone's amulet, but he doesn't have full BP. So we're going to start by using... So I didn't actually need him to have 1 HP at the beginning of the fight, I guess. Where is it? Is that the, like, the very bottom? Oh, I must have missed it. Oh, here it is. Forbidden elixir. Do not drink. And I'm gonna drink it. I'll take that. Yeah, ten midi nose instead of ten minos. You're right. So, um. Partitio is important here because of his latent power, lets him get BPs right Don't at the beginning. And we're going to start by doing Alifan on Temenos. So the reason why we gave Agnia an extra turn is so she can use Windy Refrain. The wind's a favor so we'll knock Aldera's turn order back. Time. Now it's Throne's turn. So first I'm going to use her latent power again. This time we're going to use a Rejuvenating Jam. Oh, I don't have a Rejuvenating Jam. Okay, that's fine. Um, We're gonna do. I want you to have another latent power. I'll take this. My turn. Okay, and then now. But I will hold back. She has a turn. She can give Temenos Alfrix. Alfrix, the flame bringer. Oh, 
darn it. I was, I was counting on Tamino's going before Agnia. This might complicate things. In fact, Temnos going last kind of sucks here. Okay, actually no, I can make this work, I can make this work. We're gonna do Windy Refrain on you a little bit early. The winds of favor <laughs> Is Dolchinea singing the boss theme? This isn't ideal. But I think we'll be fine. Hey Curtis, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming by. Welcome, welcome. I do like how that even though I'm following this like general strat, the RNG of the turn order is making me think about it. So it's still I feel I feel like I'm still doing something instead of just doing something prescriptively. You know what? I'm just gonna do this. Actually, is it better if I- actually no. I was gonna use Assassin, but then I forgot that I'll heal Temenos, and I don't want that. Let's get to work. This isn't good. Repent! This could be a little spicy. Depending on how things go. I really hope this works. Elfric, banish the shadows from this world. That's how it's done. Yes. Don't kill Temenos, please! Okay, that's fine. Aw, oh, dang, he undid my windy refrain! Asshole! Okay, this is still fine. So, he's gonna recover shield points every turn. But that's fine. We don't, again, you don't need to drop his shield points to zero. You just need to blast him as hard as you can right now. So Temenos has like nothing, so we're gonna give him another forbidden elixir. This poor man is gonna be drinking all these very suspect drinks. I'm not sure if he's gonna survive the end of the world after we do this. I'll take the death. My turn. Oh, see, his shields are going up, that sucks. This is why this is why I decided also to look up a strat because if I just have to fumble around on this for four hours, and I really want to finish this today because tomorrow we're doing fight or flight, and I really want the video for that one to come up immediately 24 hours after. So I need to make this video come up tomorrow on YouTube. Oh, you use the strat too, Curtis? Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out to to Spellborn, who pioneered this strat. Okay. Um. So now, latent power for the double turn. First of all, we need to get her BP back up. Throny is just going through all our jams. I'll take this. Cleaning time. But I will hold back. Okay, so now I'm gonna Abers. Now that we can start doing damage to him. I hope this does a lot of damage. I tried to boost her, boost her speed, but... Uh, it's not as much as I wanted. See, the, the thing is, you can see Galdera has four turns now, so I really gotta make sure I kill him. I'm 
gonna use Hastening Hammer. Okay, I wish Particia went first, because he could have helped Agnia out here. See, that was okay, but I'm just getting warmed up. Chishio, do I have this item? Let's see. Oh, I guess I don't have this. Wait, no, I thought I saw one. Here, Ancient Curse Talisman. I have four. Hey, Mevox, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for coming by. Welcome, welcome. Here. Have a nice ancient evil talisman, you ancient evil god. Oh, what? Oh, never mind. Okay, I thought he only got physical defense down. I'm like, what is this? I won't back down. Okay. If Temnos doesn't kill him here, Temnos is dead on the next turn. The shadows from this world. That's how it's oh, goodbye. <laughs> May the sacred flame guide you. Or something like that. Oh, a few. Because if you basically if you if you fail that part, it's gonna be a long fight after that. That's why we tried to front load everything. I mean, okay, I don't I feel good because I didn't follow the strat step by step. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Medbox, for the frogs. Because I did have to make some adjustments, so I still feel like I did something. It does feel not as satisfying as when I beat Galdera in the last game, because I went in with only a loose strat for that game. But I feel like in that game, he was a little bit more fair, and in this game, he's a lot harder. And again, I want to I want to finish this game and put a wrap to it, so all the YouTube videos are nice and compact, so... Well, thanks for calling Kirby Lark. But it kind of feels good to use like a fun strat, actually. It kind of feels good. How many times did I teach you this lesson, old man? Who doesn't get voice acting this time? Here, I'll voice act this for you, Galdera. I'll, I'll do you a favor. Ah! There we go. Yeah, yeah, there's a hidden phase three. <laughs> That'd be awful. Yeah, there's a lot more tools in this game, like, to, let's say, quote-unquote, break the game. Like, at first, I thought in the previous game, they had too much of that with, like, um, being able to overheal everyone very easily and also having patience. And this game, I think, at the beginning, it doesn't feel like that. Because at the beginning of the game, you have much less, like... You have, like, the Scholar doesn't hit as many times with their spells. There's much less AoEs. The Warrior doesn't have an AoE. Um, Almost no one has, like, wind magic, except for, like, Agnes' single target wind. So at the beginning of the game, it feels like it's harder. And then once you get, like, mid-game, is you start to get the hang of it. And then when you get to end game, when you have access to, like, all of Hikari's learn skills, all of Oshet's, uh, provoke beasts, all of their EX skills, then it becomes very broken. So it's almost like all the way until the very end, you gotta wait until it gets broken, compared to the other game where it was, like, not as broken by the end, but you can kind of have access to it a little bit earlier. Hey, Akase, welcome to the stream. No, it cannot be. My power wanes. <laughs> I'll be back for the third game. Hey, Al. You're still alive? I can't believe my eyes. You've done it. You've sealed it away. How did you even open up this door, Al? And why would you do that? Come on, man. Since the moment we met, you've saved my skin time and again. And also, I've created so much trouble for you. You have my deepest thanks, travelers. Things should be fine now, at least for a while.
I see none of you are able to speak. That is fine. I'll just do all the speaking here. To tell the truth, I came here to find a tome. From the far reaches of hell. I thought I already gave you that tome. I know it's like a rip-off translated version, but come on. Before I knew it, my journey led me here. To that nightmare. But now I can finally return home. I couldn't have done this without you, and for that I want you to know my true name. Wait, what? Who are you? I am Alfred Hornberg. Oh! So you're a descendant of Ulbrich? And you're named after... Well, no, Alfin, I guess. Maybe you're named after Al, I don't know. Oh, no. Wait, no, sorry, you're not- you may not be a descendant of Ulbrich, you're just a descendant of someone from Hornburg, because Ulbrich was from Hornburg. For a second I thought, like, Alfin and Ulbrich had a baby or something like that. <laughs> Until next we meet, friends. Wait, so... So the continent from Octopath 1 doesn't even exist on the same, like, universe as this place? So that's why we can't just sail there. Oh, goodbye. Okay. You were from a different world. I see. I see. Okay. Hmm. That's why he didn't want to say he was from that continent. So now we actually have the Spurting Ribbon, which is the same from the first game. It makes it so you don't get any enemy encounters. Yeah, I kind of wish it was Kit. I wish he, like, took off a wig and was like, I was Kit all along! Or if he was like, his last name was like Crossford, so he could be like a descendant. Okay, that was interesting. Of a reveal, I mean. Let me just double check to see if I'm not missing anything else. Oh yeah, his his inquire message, if you inquired Al, a young man traveling the world alone. He's the prince of a kingdom on a distant continent, or so he claims. For some reason he's unable to give further details. The objective of his travels is also unclear. Oh, okay, so I wonder what he did I wonder what he did on the other continent. Did he awaken Galdera over there too? <laughs> How did he get here? Is he causing problems for them over there? Are we gonna get an Octopath 3 where suddenly all the worlds get, like, paralleled together and then we have to, like, save everyone or something like that, like, Xenoblade 3 style? Galdera threw him across the ocean. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Oh, thank you for the frogs! Well, I mean, like... Al being here is not, like, it's not the same as, like, a cameo in Battle and Tales. Like, that is, like, a fun extra thing. Like, how they had, like, you know, cameo battles and Tales, or, like, Shulk and Fiona appeared in Xenoblade 2. Like, this is just a, he's straight up, like, traveled across the rift. So, and he's also a new character, too. He wasn't in the first game, other than the fact that his last name is Hornburg. Unless, unless it's, like, a prequel. What if he's, like, what if he's, like, what if this is before Galdera awakens in Octopath 1? So, like, he went back to his world, and then he did something... And then Hornburg got destroyed, and then he... and then... Galdera got summoned. I guess it doesn't matter, it's just a neat little easter egg, I guess. But, um... I thought... I, I knew this boss fight would be hard, and I knew it would be easy if I used the strat. Again, no reg I have, like, no regrets. Part of me is kind of like, I wish I just did it like I did Galdera in the first game, but also I didn't want to suffer through that, and also... I want to wrap up this series on YouTube. I don't have a video queued for tomorrow. I need- I want this video out tomorrow, and then we got Fight or Flight come out on Sunday. But I think it's kind of cool sometimes to see what you can do with the system. Like, it's one thing to see someone else do it, like, aha, someone on YouTube used Aelfric's Blessing and destroyed the boss, but it's kind of fun to do it yourself, especially when things don't go according to plan. We're like, uh-oh, this person's turn came before this person's turn, and now I did this, or uh-oh, the boss got a turn in, what do I do here? So... Still, though, you still have to understand the battle system to do a bit of quick thinking to kind of figure out how to adjust your strat, which is kind of nice, unlike 
the V-Day strat, where it was a lot more flexible. This one seemed a little bit more inflexible. But it was kind of fun. Like, it was still fun. I think I probably had the most fun fighting Galdera in the first game, and then V-Day, and then Galdera in this game, just because of that. I know that's only best because of my own doing. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching that, even though it was a little bit of a an overkill. But man, who would have thought Temnos would be such a good mage? I mean, usually, like, Oswald's the one doing all the damage with one true magic, and I didn't even use Oswald that much during my playthrough. I just used Hikari on everything, so it's kind of neat to see it. I think it would have been way more fun, though, if... Galdera second phase was kind of like V-Day second phase, where you fight with all eight people and you could swap parties, because the swapping parties mechanic was so fun, but you only get to do it for that one fight. I also kind of wish that, um, I kind of wish that this game, and Octopath 1, lets you re-challenge Galdera and V-Day, like just for fun, after you've beaten the story, like if you just go back and fight them for fun, instead of like, Oh, you didn't you didn't save a game file before you fought the boss? Well, I guess you can't do it again unless you play the game again for like 90 hours. Uh, it'd be fun because then you can just go back and like try different things without worrying about like have with while keeping one save file. Because I mean, the jams you can get an infinite number of jams. Is you gotta steal them from the right enemies. Um, it just requires a lot of farming, and a lot of the other consumable items you can still get. You just gotta farm really hard for them. Because they might have like a low drop rate from some duel with some NPC or something like that. So all the items you still can replenish, it just takes extra work. So I think it'd be nice if they let us go back and re-challenge them. I almost kind of wish that the super boss in this game wasn't Galdera. I wish it was something completely new, but I understand that it, this allows them to reuse Galdera's sprite from the first game, which is obviously a lot of work to make. So I can understand that. And they gave him a little bit of new animations and like they took away Kit from the eye and they took away LeBlanc from the chest. So... I don't know. Those are, those are my thoughts. Yeah, the Temenos train don't stop. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys enjoyed watching that. Are there any more secret bosses? Um, no. I mean, all the, a lot of the optional dungeons have secret bosses, but they're pretty easy. Like if you fight them on level, they might give you some difficulty at the time. But if you go back now, they're pretty easy. You can go back and fight them for XP in random encounters. You can also capture them using Ochet. Uh, a lot easier than in the first game. Honestly, I'm surprised in this game that when you provoke and provoke beasts, you can use their attacks infinitely. I think it's to parallel Hikari's learned skills. Because with Hanit, if you had to tame beasts, you only had a limited number of times you could use them, so... Kinda nice. And also the fact that, like, Oshet's provoke beast skill where she can summon, like, up to six of them... Seems a little bit overpowered, but it really comes in clutch, and then... Like, Hikari, some of his, like, learn skills are really, really nice and handy. A lot of people use a strategy where you take Hikari and you get that one skill from that cleric in Canelbreen. The one that gives you one turn of immunity to one character. You basically use that to turtle out and survive against Galdera. Maybe even, like, seal tege it, if you can. But the Aelfric one seems a lot more sustainable, I think. But again, it's, it means a lot of burst at the beginning of the fight, which is why you need to use things like a step ahead and stuff like that, too. It's kind of neat to see what different strategies people craft for this stuff. But again, I think for me, I think this is like a, like a bookend to the end of our journey. I love this game, but it's been a long one and I kind of feel like it's time to put it away. You know, maybe one day I'll come back and revisit it for fun or restart it one, like a new play file on my own. Or I don't know, maybe like in the long, far spun future one day, if I'm like a long time streamer, we could do like Nostalgia Week and go back and play old games that we've done before on the channel. But for now... Or we could do like, maybe like Galdera and Vide like challenge runs. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Thanks for the chaos, Relix. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I could do like a, like a quote unquote speed run or a speedier run. But again, this game's pretty long, so I'll have to really feel in the mood for that. Um, any of you guys, if you haven't seen already, tomorrow we're doing a Smasher Pass like stream. It's not Smasher Pass because that's not really the theme of this channel. Instead, it's going to be Fight or Flight, where I have a bunch of submissions from Twitter, and I'm going to choose whether I fight or not fight each person's character. Um, we have over 100 submissions right now, which is awesome, a lot more than I thought, which is great. 
If you guys would still like to submit your characters, it doesn't need to be a VTuber, it could just be an original character, you have until the end of today. Realistically, I'll probably close the thread tomorrow morning when I wake up, so we'll see, because I need to prepare the tier list maker and everything like that. But if you're interested and you haven't submitted something, that is still available. If you're watching this on YouTube, unfortunately, time would have been up by now, but if you're watching this live on Twitch, you still have a little bit of time to do that. It'll be a fun time, and I'm looking forward to it. It'll be, it'll be a good stream, I think. Yeah, yeah, thanks guys. Smash you into a wall during the fight. I'll try to be gentle. Yeah, you could also, yeah, we could do like Octopath streams where you only do like, only use the male characters or only use the female characters or keep a bunch of characters at level one or as close to level one as possible. Um, I've seen people do stuff like that too, which is kind of fun. But again, we'll be, we'll see. Thank you everyone for coming by. I'm glad you guys are excited for tomorrow, and thank you so much for watching me beat up Caldera and beat him up really good. Um, let's have a look. I didn't, I mean, I kind of expected this stream to be a little shorter. I didn't think it'd be this short, but you know what? That's fine, because I think I need time to just decompress after the week and get ready for tomorrow, because um, I need to save everyone's images and turn them into little icons for the tier list maker. Let's find someone to raid. Let's find someone who's not <laughs> playing Final Fantasy 16, because I don't want spoilers, because I'm not going to play that game until later, because I don't have a PS5 currently. I'll definitely get a PS5 before Spider-Man 2 comes out. Let's drop in on Forte. He's playing Darkest Dungeon. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for those of you that already submitted as well um, to the fight or flight. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you guys enjoyed Octopath Traveler 2. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments later on if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'll see you guys for the next stream. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.